All right. Uh, some kids um, were absent today, and some of you had indicated that you weren't able to get all the notes you wanted to in class, so I thought I'd uh, do the video for you and post it for you so you'd have this available for you. All right. Um, so anyways, I will go faster than I did in class, but if you're using this video, you're probably using it just to fill in your notes, and you can stop it and start it as you need to. All right. So we are talking about topic 1-1, and we're introducing the ideas or concepts related to exponents. Now, the first thing we, that we want to discuss is actually define or understand what are exponents. Well, exponents are those little numbers that sit on the right shoulder of a regular number and give that regular lump number a lot more value. Okay, now that's the way that we might want to say it if we were talking to a friend on the bus, but it's a little more technical than that. But this is what an exponent looks like, okay? And this has a value of 16. So this would be 4 to the second power, and it means that you, are ha you have 4 times 4, which equals 16. Now, exponents are designed to save us time. And in this case, they really don't save us time because if you write 4 to the second power, you might as well just write 16 because 16 is two digits and 4 to the second power is two digits. But in this next example, 5 to the third, you can see where if you take 5 and use it as a factor three times, you would get a value of 125. And so in this case, writing an exponent saves you a little bit of time. It's more efficient. In other words, instead of writing a 5 and a 3, or instead of writing a 1, a 2, and a 5, you're actually only going to write a 5 and a 3. Okay, so there's some efficiency in using exponents. All right? But anyways, then we went on to talk about um, how a number written in exponential form will have two parts, okay? It will have a base, the base, and the exponent. So in our example of four to the second power, in this example, four is the base, two is the exponent. It has a value of four times four, which is 16. In the other example, five to the third, 5 is the base, 3 is the exponent. It has a value of 125. All right? So those are the parts of an exponential form. You have a base and you have an exponent. It just so happens that if you have 4 to the second, you're going to square the number. If you have a number to the third, you're going to cube the number. So that's another way of looking at exponents, okay? And so there's a common understanding for raising something to the second, you're squaring it. If you're raising to the third, you're cubing it, okay? Much like you would do use area and volume. Whoop, let me come back here. Um, so we have our parts, okay? The exponent tells the base how many times it needs to be multiplied by itself, okay? That's why exponential numbers can represent huge amounts with just a few digits, okay? So that's the value of an exponent. It can represent a large number using only a few digits. A number written in exponential form uses fewer digits to identify a much larger value. So in other words, if we have 125 and we don't want to write three digits, we know that we can use five as a base and multiply it by itself three times, or five to the third, okay? This exponent is read five to the third power, or five to the third. Or as some of you pointed out, 5 cubed. It equals 125 because the base is used 
as a factor three times. Five to the third equals five times five, which equals 125, which is the same as writing it as five to the third. In this case, you see that five is a factor three times because three is the exponent. To write a product, okay, for example, 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 times 6. To write a product, this is actually a product, okay, if you view that as an expression by itself, it's actually a product because you have factors working together. To write a product in exponential for form, first identify the base. So in this case, our base is 6 because it is the repeated factor. Then count how many times it is used as a factor. Okay, so you identify the base, it's the factor, and then you count how many times. So we have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times. That number becomes the exponent. So 6 is our base, it's a factor 5 times, so this number is 6 to the 5th. What do you think the value of this exponent is? You can pause the video and try and figure it out yourself. Well, 6 to the 5th would be 7,776. All right, our next slide. To evaluate an exponential number means to find its value. So when you evaluate, essentially what you're doing is finding the answer for the value of something. Okay? So if we have 4 to the 5th, okay, we can figure out its actual value. To do this, write the base, which is 4, as factors as many times as the exponent identifies. So in this case, the base is 4, and you need to write it 5 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times as a factor. And then you simply do the math. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 multiplied by this 4, okay, and so on and so on until you get your final answer. Or you evaluate it for its simplest form, which might not necessarily be its simplest form. All right. Next, powers of 1 and powers of 0 are unique in the values they create. Okay, so the powers, a number raised to the power of 1 or the power of 0, they create kind of a unique situation. Any number raised to the power of 1 equals the number itself. So 5 to the first power would have a value of 5. Another example would be 967 to the first power has a value of 967. So any number raised to the power of 1 equals the number itself. 5 to the first power is 5. 967 to the first power, 1 is 957. Any number raised to the power of 0 except 0 equals the value of 1. So in other words, 5 raised to the power of 0 equals 1. 967 raised to the power of 0 equals 1. Okay? Now, 0 raised to the power of 0 is what we call undefined. Okay? It's undefined. There's not a solution. So 0 to the 0 power is undefined. Or there's no solution. Or it creates an empty set. Okay? But you'll talk more about that when you get into free algebra and algebra. All right? But it's good to know what that means. All right. Multiples of 10 can be written in exponential form. 
So examples of multiples of 10 would be 100, 1,000, a million. Okay, those are all multiples of 10. Now, use 10 as the base. Count the number of zeros to determine the exponent. Okay, so instead of writing out these numbers long standard form, you can use exponential form to shorten them up. Okay, so for example, if you have 100, we know that we want to use 10 as the base. So in this case, 10 would be the base. And then count the number of zeros to determine the exponent. Well, we have one, two zeros, so we know it'll be 10 to the second. And that makes sense because 10 times 10 equals 100. All right? If we had 1,000, well, we use 10 as the base, and we count the zeros. We have 3, so it's 10 to the third power. And you can see where, you know, writing 100 in exponential form doesn't save you any time. You still have to write three digits. Writing a thousand as an exponent in exponential form does save you a little bit of time because you have to do one, two, three, four, five things versus one, two, three things. Okay? A million, you're really going to save time. You have ten as your base, and you have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six zeros, so it's ten to the sixth power. And that saves you quite a bit of time. All right, one last thing that we went over in class, it talked about the fact that you can use exponents when writing numbers in expanded form. Up above, we have 43,576, and it is in standard form. Here, 43,576 is written in expanded form. Now, you learned and we discussed that expanded form it can be played out many different ways, or a couple different ways. But in fifth grade, they taught you that you, you start out working with the ones, and you do six times one gives you the six and the ones. Then you move on and you write seven times ten for the tens place. Seven times ten is seventy, and that's what you have in that place value. Then you go on to the hundreds, and you have 5 times 100 gives you the value of the hundreds place. Then you have 3 times 1,000 is the thousandths place. And the final digit, the leading digit, is 4 in the 10,000s place. So you have 4 times 10,000. Then you would have to take, after you do all that multiplication in parentheses, you would add those amounts together. And that's expanded form. Now, expanded form can be shortened down because we know that we can take multiples of 10 and write them using exponents. So we can save a little time when we write expanded form by taking our multiples of 10 and writing them exponentially. Okay? So in this case, we start with the ones and we would have 6 times 10 to the 0 power because anything raised to the power of 0 is going to be one. Then we would have 7 times 10 to the first power, and we know that 10 raised to the first power is itself. All right. Then we know that we can take the 5 in the hundreds place and take 10 as our base, two zeros, and write 5 times 10 to the second. Then we would go on and we could say, well, geez, we have 3 in the thousands place, so we could write it as 3 times 10 to the one, two, three, third power. Then we have four in the ten thousandths place, and so we could multiply four times ten to the fourth power because there's one, two, three, four zeros there, and that's how you would write it in expanded form. So anyways, there's this quick video. If you didn't get all the notes in class or you were absent, that's what we went over today. We'll go over exponents again in greater detail.